I kid. I kid a lot about being able to play in the NFL, but I can finally say, if Bill Belichick were my head coach, and we were playing in windy weather in Buffalo, I guarantee I could complete just as many passes as Mac Jones in a football game. Welcome back to Odd Man Sports. If you love John Oliver but wished he'd talk less about prescription drug price gouging and more about pooch punts, well, this might be the show for you. I'm your Odd Man host, Brandon Perna. I also have another YouTube show called That's Good Sports, so please subscribe to both channels. And for every 10 new subscribers added, I'll add a bunch more neck to this photo of Texans quarterback Davis Mills. Enough subs, he can beat Mike Lennon one day. On this week's show, I'll make the case that the Vikings are losing on purpose. I'll explain the real reason the Patriots keep winning, and I'll break down why this week is actually last week and why next week is this week. Wait, that can't be right. Why last week is next week? No, why this week is next week. Coach Tomlin, what, what is it again? Last week was last week, this week was this week, next week will be next week. Right, what he said. Dinks and dunks. The betting theme of week 13 was heavy favorites delivering with the Rams, the Bucks, and the Colts, all double digit favorites, all successfully laying the points. And in the gambling moment of the week, bettors who had that trifecta of the Steelers money line, Steelers plus four and a half, and the under hit all three on the final play. The Patriots minus three dogs in Buffalo covered for the sixth straight week. And those who had the under cashed in, thanks in large part to the strongest win on Monday Night Football since, well, since Mike Ditka was around. Susie, I was from Philly, but they got rid of me, so I'm going with the Giants. <laughs> the New York Giants lost to the surging Dolphins 20 to nine, but that didn't stop Logan Ryan from taking this shot at Tua in his post-game press conference. Look, I don't know if you guys saw my high school quarterback tape, but I'm gonna put it out there, emergency. A lot like Tua as a lefty, I can throw two yard passes to the left. Ouch. Now this Tua bullying comes only a few days after video emerged of the embattled Dolphins quarterback getting hit with a spitball during a post-practice press conference. So who took an aim at Tua in this case? Well, I'm glad you asked. Tony, roll the Zapruder film. You know, for me, the most important thing was the guys in the locker room. It wasn't really the outside noise, what was going, what was going on around, uh, you know, the building. Uh, but, but yeah, um, you know, other than that, it just, Bro, you're distracting us. <laughs> I don't even know what the question was. What's my dude with distractions? Yeah. Um. <laughs> the Seahawks ended their three game losing streak in a win over the 49ers with Russell Wilson having his best game since finger surgery. After the game, Russ said it was a conversation with a Hall of Fame coach, Tony Dungy, which helped him get in the right mindset to perform. I had a, you know, a great, you know, former head coach tell me, give me a Hall of Fame, have a Hall of Fame demeanor, have a Hall of Fame week, have a Hall of Fame day, have a, have a Hall of Fame breakfast. That's, that's gotta be your mentality. And if you're wondering what exactly is a Hall of Fame breakfast, it's just a regular breakfast, but it's delivered to your room by former Hall of Fame president, David Baker. And if you're wondering, what the opposite of a Hall of Fame breakfast is, it's having someone throw hot grits at you, which is what Dalvin Cook alleges his ex-girlfriend threatened to do. And finally, the Lions got their first win over the Vikings with Jared Goff throwing a touchdown on the final play of the game. And in a curious decision, head coach Mike Zimmer had his cornerback covering fans. Fans in the front row, just in case Jared Goff decided to throw it away on fourth down. Which doesn't make much sense until you remember 
A. Goff has thrown the ball away on fourth down this season multiple times. And B, if Mike Zimmer can get himself fired, he'll get a paid two-year vacation with his new girlfriend, Australian model Katrina Micton, who, considering his retina history, is quite literally a sight for sore eyes. Now, if you're thinking the 38-year-old model and the 65-year-old coach have nothing in common, you'd be wrong, because Katrina's Maxim cover revealed the top 25 skinny dipping spots in the world and the exact thing I think about when I'm trying not to come. Mike Zimmer skinny dipping, Mike Zimmer skinny dipping, Mike Zimmer skinny dipping! Doesn't always work. Money talks! If you're like me, your favorite thing is watching football all day by yourself. And your second favorite thing is putting on a funny hat and going out to the track to watch horses run in circles while getting slapped on the ass. Which leads me to this sad note from Monday about Medina Spirit. And I'll be honest here, I thought Medina Spirit was a Tyler Perry Halloween movie. There is shocking news tonight for horse racing fans. Medina Spirit, the first place finisher of this year's Kentucky Derby, died following a workout at a California racetrack. Now back in May, the thoroughbred was disqualified from the Triple Crown race after urine tests revealed the presence of steroids, which raised many questions, like how did the drugs get into the horse's system? And just how big a specimen cup do you need for someone who literally pisses like a racehorse? Back in June, Bob Baffert, the horse's famed trainer, sued the Kentucky Racing Commission, claiming a topical ointment triggered the positive test a fact his lawyers argued in court. This argument proved persuasive enough that a judge ordered the frozen urine sample to be transported to New York on a private jet and to ensure a proper chain of custody, two representatives from both sides will accompany the sample to New York. So next time you're stuck on a plane next to a big old fat guy, remember, it could be a whole lot worse. In 10 career starts, Medina Spirit had five wins, not to mention earnings of over three and a half million dollars. And the three-year-old Colt was just getting started. Reminds me of another young Colt whose career was just getting started but abruptly ended. The saddest part of this whole story, at least from the horse's perspective, is the timing. Because Medina Spirit will never enjoy the fruits of his labor living that post-racing stud life, eating grade-A carrots in the sun while plowing every mare in town. And that, I think we can all agree, is the real tragedy. Odd man out! In recent days, college football coaches have been handed some of the most lucrative contracts the sport has ever seen. Lincoln Riley, Brian Kelly, Mel Tucker, all coaches with first names as last names have raised the bar for what football coaches are paid. And yet, Monday night served as a reminder that Bill Belichick was the most underpaid coach in America. The Patriots post Brady were supposed to suck or at least be average, which after 20 years of dominating would feel like sucking. The run of AFC East titles Postseason buys and Super Bowl appearances were surely done when Brady took his talents to Tampa, right? Right? Wrong. After one solitary, ho-hum, seven and nine season, Belichick has rebuilt the entire enterprise right down to the carbon copy of his old Hall of Fame QB. And while we've seen some games during Belichick's tenure with his fingerprints all over them, this week's win in Buffalo is the best example of the insane effect Belichick can have on the outcome. Uh, uh, winds up to 50 miles per hour coming out of the southwest. Computing. Computing. Run the ball every time. Run the ball every time. But sir, that's impossible. The system isn't built for that, sir. 
I said, run the ball every time, every time, every time. And of course, his robotic game plan worked perfectly. And of course, no other coach would have had the stones or the discipline to pull it off. The reality is, this exact group of Patriot players under any other coach, Matt Nagy, Matt Rule, Matt LaFleur is below 500. Any Matt, really. And yet, the almighty Belichick has the Pats at nine and four, including six and O oh on the road, winning seven straight and atop the AFC. It was reported that Dollar Bill is the highest paid coach in the NFL. And to be honest, if he made $100 million in a year, it would be closer to his value to the franchise. Belichick is a one of one. He cannot be replicated or approximated, which is why those on the Belichick coaching tree like Bill O'Brien, Matt Patricia, and Joe Judge haven't neared his success. And for the final word on the greatest coach in the history of the sport, it's only fitting that it comes from Belichick's most prized former pupil. You can tell I keep up with the team more than he does. He, he does. We, were, we were talking earlier, and we were talking about Joe Judge, he come from Belichick tree. He said, Belichick got a tree. I said, oh, Lord. All right, that's it for today. Join me next week, which when you watch it, will technically be this week, I think. Whenever it is, I'll see you then. But not really, because I can't see through YouTube. Ah, right, man, sports. It's in the game.